Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome. Today's topic is the 1901 Cleveland Blues ALMLB baseball season. Yeah, the Cleveland Lake Shores had been renamed the Cleveland Blues, and uh, again, the, Blue, uh, the Cle- well, the Cleveland Blues were playing at uh, Mer- in the American League, which in 1901 had become a major league. So, after many years of Major League Baseball in Cleveland. In the National League, with the, with the Blues and then the Spiders, and then a year, of, uh, one year of minor league baseball, Cleveland was back in the major leagues. This time in the American League, uh, with the with the franchise that became the Cleveland Indians. In fact, uh, if you read Russell Schneider's history of the Cleveland Indians, this is uh, 1901 is the first year because it's uh, this is the same franchise that became the Cleveland. Well, the name was changed to uh, the Broncos and then the Naps. Uh, the Molly Maguires, and finally the Cleveland Indians in 1915. Again, the uh, Cleveland Blues were playing at League Park, and uh, and uh, they finished. They had a tough year in 1901. They finished in seventh place, a record of 54 and 82, winning percentage of 397, below 400. So that's kind of tough. 29 games out of first. First place team was the Chicago White Stockings, who finished at 83 and 53. The second place, the Boston Americans, 79 and 57. They changed their name to the Red Sox uh, later. Third place, the Detroit Tigers, 74 and 61. So Detroit's one of the uh, original members of the of the American League. The Philadelphia Athletics were in fourth place, 74 and 62. Of course, they moved to uh, Kansas City and then Oakland. Um, Fifth place, the Baltimore Orioles, 68 and 65. They had been a National League team. Sixth place, the Washington Senators, 61 and 72. Seventh place, the Cleveland Blues, 54 and 82. And eighth and last place, the Milwaukee Brewers, 48 and 89. The attendance at League Park for home games for the Cleveland Blues in 1901 was 131,380. And this was the lowest in the American League. Uh, But it was uh, higher than the Spiders' era. So Cleveland, things were looking up for Cleveland baseball. The team had blue uniforms in 1901. Opening day at League Park uh, was on May 23rd. 9,000 fans came. They had a big crowd. And the Blues played the Senators. Um, then there was a, well, again, now that, that was actually early. That was in April, I'm sorry. And anyway, uh, in, on May 23rd, in, in a game between the Blues and Senators at League Park, the Senators had a lead in the ninth inning, 13-5, to five, and there were two outs. Cleveland was down by eight. And uh, the Blues scored nine runs with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. And we won that game 14-13, to 13, so that's an extremely exciting game. Now, the Blues, that's a, that was a traditional name the Cleveland uh, for Cleveland Pro Baseball. In fact, that, that was the name of the team in Cleveland from 1879 to 1884 and 1887 and 1888. So for eight years, the Cleveland Blues. So they, they brought back that old traditional name. Now, the American League in 1901, as I said, uh, was, uh, it had one year of, as a minor league, and now uh, the, Amer- uh, the American League was a major league also. And, the, uh, and there were a lot of changes. Teams in Kansas City, Minneapolis, Indianapolis, and Buffalo were gone. Okay? And, then the four, and those were replaced by uh, uh, new teams in, or by teams in uh, New York, New York, Boston, Philadelphia, or the new teams were in Boston, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington. And so Ben Johnson decided to go to hit, to uh, take on the, the National League. And there was head-to-head competition in three cities, Boston, Philadelphia, and Chicago. In other words, each of those cities had an American League and a National League team. And, and uh, both teams were competing for the fans in those, te- in those cities. And then the following year, 1902, uh, the American League put a team in St. Louis. So again, there was head-to-head competition. The following year, 1903, in New York. So by that, uh, so again, so by by 1903, five cities had uh, two teams, one in each league. After 1903, the, the the American League was unchanged for 50 years. So there was a lot of stability. 
So 1901 was a year at where was the, the year in which the American League challenged the National League, and they started to uh, offer uh, um, high contracts to players to jump from the National League to the American League. And of course, so this was very good news for all of the players because salaries went up. And two of the stars who jumped uh, from the National League to the American League were former Spider Cy Young and uh, and and future and very near future Napoleon Lajoie who would uh, become famous in Cleveland. They both jumped to the uh, American League. And uh, the National League called the American League an outlaw league, and there was war between the two leagues before they finally worked things out. So the uh, manager, again, for the uh, Cleveland team was Jimmy McCallier, who was a familiar face, a guy who had been our star uh, center fielder for the Spiders for many years. And he, he, he played in three games besides managing, had seven at bats and a hit for a av- uh, batting average of 143. He also did a little pitching, pitched in one game, did not have a decision, pitched a third of an inning, gave up two hits, three runs, and zero earned runs. Jimmy McCallier, our manager in 1901, who played a little bit. Now the uh, regular lineup, Bob Wood was our catcher. Wood had a good year. He hit 292, 23 doubles, three triples, a home run. 49 RBIs, 6 stolen bases in 98 games. Wood was from Thornhill, Ohio. He died in Churchill, Ohio in 1943 at age 77. Career average of 281, 2 home runs, 168 RBIs. Wood played for the Cincinnati Reds, Cleveland Blues, Cleveland Broncos, and Detroit Tigers between 1898 and 1905. And he had been a rookie at age 32, Bob Wood. Our, fir- our fine first baseman was Candy Lachance. Lachance hit 303, 22 doubles, 9 triples, a home run, 75 RBIs, 11 stolen bases, and 133 games. And Lachance had played for the Cleveland Lakeshores in 1900, the year before. Candy Lachance. Irv Beck was our second baseman. Beck hit 289, 26 doubles, 8 triples, 6 home runs. 79 RBIs, 7 stolen bases, and 135 games. Fine year for Irv Beck. Beck was from Toledo, Ohio. He died in Toledo in 1916 at age 38. Career average of 291, 9 home runs, 123 RBIs. Fine career average. Beck played for the Brooklyn Superbas, Cleveland Blues, Cincinnati Reds, and Detroit Tigers between 1899 and 1902. So a relatively brief career for Irv Beck. Frank Scheibeck was our shortstop. Scheibeck hit, hit 213, 11 doubles, 3 triples, 38 RBIs, 3 stolen bases, and 93 games. And Scheibeck had been a rookie with the Cleveland Blues back in 1887. So 14 years later, it was nice having Frank Scheibeck back in town. Bill Bradley was our third baseman. Uh, Bradley eventually managed later in his career. Bradley uh, hit 293, 28 doubles, 13 triples, a home run, 55 RBIs, 15 stolen bases, and 133 games. He also did, pitched in one game, did not have a decision, uh, gave up four hits, three runs, and but, but zero earned runs. Bradley was from Cleveland, Ohio. He died in Cleveland in 1954 at age 76. As a, his career average was was 271, 34 home runs, 552 RBIs, and 181 stolen bases. Now, he did some uh, managing. Managed his record was 97 and 98, winning percentage of 497. He played for the Chicago Orphans, Cleveland Blues, Cleveland Broncos, Cleveland Naps, Brooklyn Tip Tops, and Kansas City Packers from 1899 to 1915. So, and he was the manager of the Cleveland Naps in 1909, and he's in the Cleveland Indians Hall of Fame. So he had many fine years playing for Cleveland. He was a tremendous player. Bill Bradley. He uh, also hit for the cycle in 1903, and he's one of the, he was one of the best MLB third basemen before 1915. I'm sorry, 1950. He led the American League, uh, uh, American League third baseman in fielding percentage four times. In 1902, he hit home runs in four straight games. After he retired, he became a scout for the Indians, and he's buried in Calvary Cemetery in Cleveland. And he was one of these star players 
uh, from the National League that was picked up in a raid, in other words, who was lured through a higher salary to jump to the American League. Bill Bradley, tremendous player. Now, in the outfield, a uh, regular player was Jack O'Brien, who hit 283, 14 doubles, 5 triples, 39 RBIs, 13 stolen bases in 92 games. O'Brien was from Water Vliet, New York. He died in Water Vliet in 1933 at age 60. Career average of 259, 9 home runs, 133 RBIs. O'Brien played for the Washington, Washington Senators in the National League than the Washington Senators in the American League, the Cleveland Blues, and Boston Americans. Between 1899 and 1903, he won a World Series in 1903 with Boston. O'Brien batted left and threw right, and it was said that he was a very unique person. Interesting fellow, Jack O'Brien. Jack, o- Jack McCarthy was another regular outfielder. McCarthy had a fine year. He hit uh, 321. 14 doubles, 7 triples, 32 RBIs, 9 stolen bases in 86 games. McCarthy was from Hardwick, Massachusetts. He died in Chicago, Illinois in 1948 at age 78. Career average of 287, 1,203 hits, and 7 home runs. McCarthy played for the Cincinnati Reds, Pittsburgh Pirates, Chicago Orphans, Cleveland Blues, Cleveland Broncos, Cleveland Naps, Chicago Cubs, and Brooklyn Superbas between 1893 and 1907. He had 2,000, he went 2,736 at-bats without a home run. That's a record. He had a very unusual injury. He tripped over the umpire's broom, which umpires would use to sweep home plate and had an ankle injury. And as a result of that accident, there was a new rule that the umpire had to clean home plate home plate with a whisk broom, which would he, he would keep in his pocket. In other words, a very small broom, not, you know, not the regular large, hand, long-handled broom. He'd have this whisk broom, broom that you'd see. If you go to games, you see the umpire bend over to sweep the plate because it uh, you know, gets uh, dirt on it, and it's hard, harder for the pitcher to see and harder to call balls and strikes. And they, they keep that, I believe, in their back pocket because of this incident. In 1905, uh, McCarthy was the first fielder to throw out three runners at home plate in one game. After he retired, he was a manager in the minor leagues, and in 1930, he was a clerk at Chicago Probate Court. Jack McCarthy. Ali Pickering was another regular outfielder. Pickering hit uh, 309, 25 doubles, 6 triples, 40 RBIs, 36 stolen bases, and 137 games. And Pickering played for the Cleveland Spiders in 1897 and the Cleveland Lakeshores in 1900. Ollie Pickering. Now, the bench players included outfielder Zaza Harvey, who hit 353. Wow! Five doubles, five triples, a home run, 24 RBIs, 15 stolen bases in 45 games. Harvey was from Saratoga, California. He died in Santa Monica, California at age 75 in 1954. A career average of 332, one home run, 32 RBIs. Harvey played for the Chicago Orphans, Chicago White Sox, Cleveland Blues, and Cleveland Broncos between 1900 and 1902. That's very strange. He had such a brief career and a lifetime 332 hitter. Wow, Zaza Harvey. George Yeager was a spare catcher coming off the bench. Yeager hit 223, 31 hits. Five doubles, 14 RBIs, two stolen bases in 39 games. Yeager was from Cincinnati, Ohio. He died in Cincinnati in 1940 at age 66. Career average of 238, five home runs, 73 RBIs. Yeager played for the Boston Bean Eaters, Cleveland Blues, Pittsburgh Pirates, New York Giants, and Baltimore Orioles between 1896 and 1902. He won pennants in 1897 and 1898 with Boston and in 1901 with Pittsburgh. They called him Doc. After, uh, after he retired, he worked as a switch tender for the Southern Railroad Company. And he died of a cerebral hemorrhage. There was a catcher back in the 1970s named Steve Yeager, p- played for the Dodgers. and I'm not sure if they're, they're related, but they have the same last name, and they were both catchers uh, many years apart. George Yeager. Joe Connor was another uh, spare catcher coming off the bench. Connor hit 140, 17 hits, three doubles, a triple, 
six RBIs, two stolen bases in 37 games. Connor was from Waterbury, Connecticut. He died in Waterbury in 1957 at age 82. Career average of 199, one home run and 54 hits. Connor played for the St. Louis Browns, Boston Bean Eaters, Milwaukee Brewers, Cleveland Blues, and New York Highlanders between 1895 and 1905. His brother Roger Connor was also an MLB player, and Roger Connor was the home run king before Babe Ruth. So when Babe Ruth became the home run king, he replaced Roger Connor, who had 138 career home runs. So you can see how Babe Ruth really changed baseball because he had 714 home runs, so a big change. Anyway, Roger Connor, the brother of Joe Connor, our Cleveland's bench catcher in 1901. Another bench player was Frank Gennens, who played outfield. And Gennens uh, had been with the Cleveland Lake Shores in 1900. And in, 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 for the 01 Blues, Gennens had 228, 23 hits, five doubles, nine RBIs, three stolen bases in 26 games. Frank Gennens. Danny Shea was a shortstop off the bench. Shea hit 227, 17 hits, two doubles, two triples, 10 RBIs in 19 games, and Shea had played for the Cleveland Lakeshores in 1900. Danny Shea. Tom Donovan was an out, a spare outfielder, and Donovan hit 254, 18 hits, three doubles, a triple, five RBIs, a stolen base in 18 games. He also pitched one game, had an ERA of 5.14 and seven innings pitched. Donovan was from West Troy, New York. He died in Water Vliet, New York in 1933 at age 60. And his MLB career was just with the Cleveland Blues in 1901. Tom Donovan. Jim McGuire was a spare shortstop. McGuire hit 232, 16 hits, 2 doubles, 3 RBIs, 18 games. McGuire was from Dunkirk, New York. He died in Buffalo, New York in 1917 at age 41. And again, his MLB career was just with Cleveland in 1901. Jim McGuire. Bill Hallman was a, a shortstop off the bench. Hallman hit 211, four hits, three RBIs in five games. Hallman was from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He died in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 1920 at age 53. Career average of 272, 21 home runs, 769 RBIs. Hallman played for the Philadelphia Quakers. Philadelphia Athletics, Philadelphia Phillies, St. Louis Browns, Brooklyn Bridegrooms, Cleveland Blues, and Philadelphia Phillies between 1888 and 1903. He was the manager for the St. Louis Browns in 1897. In 1891, Holloman led the American Association in games played with 141. And in 1901, he led the National League with sacrifice hits. He had a. There are a hand, It is said that there are a hand, There were a handful of players from Hallman's generation who made brief theater appearance, who appeared in the theater in brief parts with little dialogue. This is before movies with live actors, you know, in plays. And it was said that Tom, Hallman had the talent to be have a career in theater. In other words, he was, was a tremendous actor and could have been a professional. He died of a of heart disease and he was had been sick for four months. Bill Hallman. Truck Egan was a spare infielder. Egan hit one Egan hit 167, three hits, 18 at bats, a triple, two RBIs in five games. Egan was from San Francisco, California. He died in San Francisco in 1949 at age 71. Career average of 133. And he had four 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 RBIs. Egan played for the Pittsburgh Pirates and Cleveland Blues in 1901. And he had a long minor league career. He had 1,830 hits and 105 home runs in the minor leagues. And he was, for that, he was inducted into the Pacific Coast League Hall of Fame, Truck Egan. Frank Cross was another outfielder. He batted 600. He had three hits in five at-bats in one game. So that's really something. And Cross had played for the Cleveland Lakeshores in 1900. Ed Cermak was another outfielder. He tended to play right field, and he got in one game. He batted four times, did not get a hit, and struck out four times. Uh, Cermak was from Cleveland, Ohio. He died in Cleveland in 1911 at age 30. Cermak played for the Cleveland Blues in 1901. This was the extent of his MLB career. 
After he, re- he retired, he became an umpire and was struck in the throat by a foul ball in 1911, lost his ability to speak. He died of tuberculosis that year. But it was said that the, the throat injury was not contributory to his death. He's buried at the Woodland Cemetery in Cleveland. Ed Cermak died at age 30. Tragic. Harry Hogan was another outfielder. Hogan got in one game, batted four times, did not get a hit. Hogan was from Syracuse, New York. He died in Syracuse in 1934 at age 57, and his MLB career was just with the Cleveland Blues in 1901. Harry Hogan. Russ Hall was a shortstop. Hall hit 500, batted four times, had two hits, and scored two runs in one game. Hall was from Shelbyville, Kentucky. He died in Los Angeles, California in 1937 at age 65. Career average of 252 with 10 RBIs. Hall played for the St. Louis Browns and Cleveland Blues between 1898 and 1901. Russ Hall. Shorty Gallagher was another outfielder. Gallagher got in two games, batted four times, did not get a hit. Gallagher was from Detroit, Michigan. He died in Detroit in 1924 at age 52. And his MLB career was just with the Cleveland Blues in 1901. Shorty Gallagher. Patty Livingston was another catcher. Um, Livingston played in one game, batted twice, did not get a hit. Livingston was from Cleveland, Ohio. He died in Cleveland in 1977 at age 97. Not that long ago. Career average of 209 with 120 hits. Livingston played for the Cleveland Blues, Cincinnati Reds, Philadelphia Athletics, Cleveland Naps, and St. Louis Cardinals between 1901 and 1917. He won World Series championships in 1910 and 1911 with the Philadelphia A's, and he's the, he was the last living survivor of the inaugural year of the American League in 1901 as a major league. And his death, he was the oldest living former MLB player, Patty Livingston. Now, in the pitching staff, Earl Moore was our ace p- pitcher, Moore hit 162. He had 16 hits, 6 RBIs, a stolen base in 31 games. His pitching record was 16 and 14, ERA of 2.90, 30 starts, 20 complete games, and 4 shutouts. Moore was from Pickerington, Ohio. He died in Columbus, Ohio in 1961 at age 84. Career uh, uh, pitching record was 162 and 154, ERA of 2.78, very good. 1,108 strikeouts. Moore played for the Cleveland Blues, Cleveland Broncos, Cleveland Naps, New York Highlanders, Philadelphia Phillies, and Chicago Cubs, and the Buffalo Buffeds between 1901 and 1914. In 1903, he was the American League ERA leader, 1.77. Really good. 1910, he was the National League strikeout leader. He had a sidearm throwing style. They called him Crossfire. On May 9, 1901, he pitched the first no-hitter in the American League for Cleveland. However, he lost that game in the 10th inning because Cleveland apparently could not score. He had a special deal with his father. Whenever, whenever he would win a game, his father would send him a check for $100. When he lost a game, his father would write him a letter of sympathy. Very nice. Earl Moore. Pete Dowling was second in the rotation. Dowling hit 162 at 16 hits, a double, a home run, and 10 RBIs in 33 games. Dowling's pitching record was 11 and 22, ERA of 3.86, 30 starts, 28 complete games, and two shutouts. Dowling was from St. Louis, Missouri. He died in Hot Lake, Oregon, in 1905 at age 28. His pitching record for his career was 39 and 65 with an ERA of 3.87. 299 strikeouts. Dowling played for the Louisville Colonels, Milwaukee Brewers, Cleveland, and Cleveland Blues between 1897 and 1901. He had developed alcoholism, unfortunately. In 1905, he was tra- traveling to La Grande, Oregon, where he had joined a semi-pro team. He missed the train and at the Fox Lake train station to dis- and decided to walk on the tra- railroad tracks to the game. He was struck by an oncoming train and decapitated. So that was the end of Pete Dowling. He was interred at the Oddfellows Cemetery in La Grande, Oregon. Pete Dowling.
tragic. Bill Hart was uh, in the rotation, pitching rotation. Hart hit 219, 14 hits, 6 RBIs in 20 games. Hart's pitching record was 7-11, and ERA of 3.77, 19 starts, 16 complete games. Hart was from Louisville, Kentucky. He died in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1936 at age 71. A career record of 66 and 120. ERA of 4.65, 431 strikeouts. Hart pitched for the Philadelphia Athletics, Brooklyn Grooms, Pittsburgh Pirates, St. Louis Browns, and Cleveland Blues between 1886 and 1901. So this was the end of his 15-year MLB career. Bill Hart. Ed Scott was another pitcher. Scott hit 208, 10 hits, 3 doubles, a home run, 8 RBIs in 17 games. Scott's pitching record was he was 6 and 6. ERA of 4.40, 16 starts, 11 complete games and a save. Bill Hoffer, that was another pitcher, hit Hoffer hit 136, 6 hits, 2 triples, 2 2 RBIs in 17 games. Hoffer's pitching record was 3 and 8 with an ERA of 4.55, 10 starts, 10 complete games and 3 saves. Hoffer was from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He died in Cedar Rapids in 1959 at age 88. Career record of 92 and 46. 3.75 ERA, 314 strikeouts. Hoffer pitched for the Baltimore Orioles, Pittsburgh Pirates, and Cleveland Blues between 1895 and 1901. So this was the end of his six-year career. He won National League pennants in 1895 and 1896 with Baltimore. He has the 16th highest Winning percentage in MLB history, 667. He had three 20 win seasons. They called him Wizard. A fine career for Bill Hoffer. Jack Bracken was another pitcher. Bracken hit 227, 10 hits, four doubles, four RBIs in 12 games. Bracken's pitching record was 4 and 8, ERA of 6.21, 12 starts, and he completed all 12 of them. Bracken was from Cleveland, Ohio. He died in Highland Park, Michigan in 1954 at age 73. His MLB career was just with the Cleveland Blues in 1901. And on September 15th against Detroit, he gave up 24 hits in seven innings pitched in a 21 uh, to nothing loss. Jack Bracken. Harry McNeil was another pitcher. McNeil hit 162, six hits, 37 at bats, a double, two RBIs in 12 games. McNeil's pitching record was 5-5, five and five, an ERA of 4.43, 10 starts, 9 complete games. McNeil was from Iberia, Ohio. He died in Cleveland, Ohio in 1945 at age 67, and his MLB career was just with the Cleveland Blues in 1901. Harry McNeil. Bill Crystal was another pitcher. Crystal hit 350, 7 hits in 20 at-bats, 2 triples in 6 games. Crystal's pitching record was 1-5, an ERA of 4.84, 6 starts, 5 complete games, and a shutout. Crystal was from Odessa, Ukraine, and what became the Soviet Union in Eastern Europe. He died in Buffalo, New York in 1939 at age 63. And his MLB career was just with the Cleveland Blues in 1901. He was the first MLB player born in the Ukraine. There have been only three in MLB history, Bill Crystal, Reuben Ewing, and Izzy Goldstein. Bill Crystal. Another pitcher was Dick Braggins. Braggins hit 154, two hits, 13 at-bats, two RBIs, a stolen base in four games. Braggins' pitching record was 1-2 and two with an ERA of 4.78, three starts, and two complete games. And Braggins had pitched uh, for the Cleveland Lakeshores in 1900. Gus Weihing was another pitcher. Weihing Got in two games. He batted five times, did not get a hit. His pitching record, he had no decisions and an ERA of 7.94. Two, two games and one start. Wei Hing was from Louisville, Kentucky. He died in Louisville in 1955 at age 88. His uh, pitching record was 264 and 232. Wow, he really had a career. ERA of 3.89, 1,665 strikeouts. Wei Hing pitched for the Philadelphia Athletics, Brooklyn Wards Wonders, Philadelphia Phillies, Pittsburgh Pirates, Louisville Colonels, Washington Senators, St. Louis Cardinals, Brooklyn Superbas, 
Cleveland Blues, and Cincinnati Reds between 1887 and 1901. Wei Heng has the 12th most complete games in MLB history, 448. He had four 200-plus strikeout seasons. He had, uh, he had se- seven 20-win seasons. He had a no-hitter in 1888. In, 18, in the 1892, he won. In 1892, he won 32 games. They called him Cannonball, Rubber Arm, and Rubber Wing Gus. He has the most hit batters in a career, 277. In 1892, he was accused of possible pigeon theft, grand larceny, and the newspaper was written, "Quote: Valuable pigeons found in his possession." He could not explain how he got the birds, and was therefore arrested. This was at the National, during the time of the National Pigeon Show in Louisville, Kentucky. Wei Hing has a weakness for fine pigeons, is in fact quite a pigeon fancier. fancier. Wei Hing has in the past been in trouble through indiscretion, but nothing more serious than conviviality and consequent excesses. Wei Hing was yeah, either cleared or settled the matter, whether he uh, stole the pigeons or or did not. So anyway, they were they were all. It was it was worked out. Gus Weihing. And finally, Bach Baker was another pitcher. Baker uh, got in one game, batted four times, did not get a hit. His pitching record was 0 and 1 with an ERA of 5.63, one start and one complete game. And Baker had played for the Cleveland Lake Shores in 1900. Now, since there was war between the American League and National League, there was no World Series, so there were two champions in 1901 in the MLB. The American League champion was the first place Chicago White Stockings, who won the pennant. The National League was the Pittsburgh Pirates, who won, won, the, won, the, won the pennant for the National League. So that's the story of the 1901 Cleveland Blues. We were back in the major leagues, and uh, this was, you know, this is... Uh, beginning of what became the Cleveland Indians and we've been in the major leagues ever since then so 117 years straight of major league baseball in Cleveland God bless the fellows who played for the Cleveland Blues in 1901 they had the Cleveland on their jerseys and they were our guys and God God bless everyone else associated with the team especially the fans including the Civil War veterans and the Spanish-American War veterans Captains of the Cuyahoga, lovers of Lake Erie, Terminal Tower Power, Euclid Avenue Electricity, fans of the Free Stamp Statue and the Fountain of Eternal Life, Progressive Field Pals, First Energy Stadium Friends, Quicken Loans Arena Enthusiasts, Severance Hall Stalwarts, Tribe, Browns, Cavs, Monsters, and Gladiators Rule, Cleveland City of Champions. It's been 70 years since 1948. This is our year. Cleveland is the best location in the nation on the north coast of America. New York is the Big Apple. Cleveland is a plum. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope I hope you weren't bored to tears. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.